This conference will now be recorded. Hello everyone. We are continuing with the topic how to prepare L kits and some of the methods we have already covered and the reactions that we have already seen. Based on that, we will discuss two problems. And once it is finished, the rest of the preparation of alkane methods we will uh, learn. And once that is also complete, next we will start physical and chemical properties of alkane. Here we have a question which is related to Korehaus synthesis of alkane that we have already seen. So it is asking that which of the following alkyl halides is not suitable for this uh, synthesis? That is, which of this halo alkene or alkyl halide we cannot use as a starting material for core house we have seen in the core house that there is some restriction on the types of a halo alkene or alkyl halides as starting material and among those restrictions one restriction was that there should not be a highly steric hindrance especially to that carbon with which the halogen is directly attached so here with this, it is very simple. So no, obviously it will not be the correct answer. Then C2H5I, that means here CH3, CH2, then I. Now in this carbon also, there is no steric hindrance. So all these three, that is I'm talking about ADC, all these three are basically a linear chain. There is no branching, especially the carbon with which the halogen is attached. But if you look at the last one, here the structure is like this. If we write all the bonds elaborately, so here we have this carbon with which halogen is directly attached. Here we have some steric hindrance, right? So that is why tertiary butyl bromide, it is not an ideal substrate for core house synthesis. So that is why this will be the correct option. And why this is not suitable? What is the problem we face when we start with this type of starting material in core house? What will be the uh, site product? Because if you use this as starting material, instead of getting the desired product, you will get some unnecessary site product. And why? how that happens, detailed discussion we have already done in the previous class. So I'm not uh, repeating that again. So last option would be the correct option. The next question is related to Wood's reaction. So this is another reaction by which you can prepare um, alkene. So here you can see some alkenes, though there is some uh, ring structure also present here. There is a small mistake. This will be like this. And we have seen in Wood's reaction that we always prepare, prepare symmetrical alkene. Now, if we look at the options, all the alkene that you are seeing here, they are basically symmetrical, isn't it? You will find some middle point that is in the first case, if you cut the molecule here, both sides are same. If you cut it here, both sides are same. Here, both sides are same. Here, also both sides are same. Then all it at a first glance, it seems that all of them are basically fulfilling the criteria of Wood's direction. But actually, if you focus on uh, in detail, look at the molecules in detail and try to cut the CC bond, which will be produced in the Wood's reaction. So what I'm trying to say, just move backward and try to find what will be the starting material so in case of the first option if you break here from this side you can have one halogen hello alkene so suppose this is the hello alkene and from other side also the same type of hello alkene you can get okay there is no problem both are symmetrical but if you you can also do it for c and d if you cut it here just put with these two carbon just put two halogen left hand side right hand side same thing you can also do in case of D. If you break it here, you just have to add halogen. So it will be like this. The first one is six member ring, second one is five member ring. There is a methyl substituent. And this is the point where we have uh, the CC bond we have broken. So this will be the halogen as starting material. But see, if you cut this molecule, here the ring structure basically you are cutting. So you cannot do so. So somewhere, and that is if you cut it like this, what will be the halogen? So either you have to cut it here or you have to cut it this position. Now, these two positions are also equivalent. And if you do so, the halogens will be not symmetrical. So this will be one halogen from the this part and from the other part, the halogen will be something like this. So these two are not similar halogen, but in whose reaction we take similar type of halogen, right? So that is the reason these 
uh, you this hydrocarbon you cannot prepare effectively by Wood's reaction. Okay, because only symmetrical uh, product uh, is obtained in Wood's reaction. So option B will be the correct option. What is the number of moles of water molecules required to prepare n moles of methane? So here you are preparing n moles of methane. Now we will start with suppose uh, one methane, uh, methane is there. If you want to make it from methyl magnesium bromide, because the question is asking how many water molecules required to prepare methane starting from methyl magnesium iodide that means water is one of the starting material methyl magnesium iodide is another starting material so let me write all the starting material methyl magnesium iodide and water so in Grignard uh, reagent we have seen that is from Grignard reagent when you prepare alkane you take some Digna reagent and another substrate you take where some active hydrogen is present. Now, active hydrogen present uh, molecules, water is one example. You can take alcohol, you can take acid. So, these are the different examples. So, in this case, we have taken water from which one active hydrogen will be captured by this R group of uh, Digna reagent. So, in general, we can write it like this. So, here R group is basically the group which will take the proton from water. So water molecule, if I write it in this way, this R, which is having some carbonyl type of character, it will take this hydrogen and HO will be broken. And this OH part will be combined with MGI. So what you will get, you will get ultimately RH and Mg OH I. Now in, in our case, R group is methyl. So CH3 and capturing hydrogen, so it will produce CH3. So here try to understand the ratio of the two starting material because it is asking that n moles of methane you are producing. So when you are producing n moles of methyl, what should be the number of moles of water molecules provided you have taken n moles of methyl magnesium iodide. Now the ratio of methyl magnesium iodide and water is 1 is to 1 isn't it because in ch3 mgi mgi part is combining with oh part and ch3 is combining with h so in water molecule one hydrogen is now attached to it r group that means we are getting methane another oh that is another h is not separated it is still in oh group and this oh group is now part of this side product so it is basically one is to one right so when you take n moles of methyl magnesium brom iodide, it requires same moles of water and it will produce n moles of methane. So correct option would, should be option A. Okay. So see, uh, this uh, question, it proves that uh, you have to understand the reaction in detail. If you somehow miss uh, that which part of the one reactant is added to other which part of the other reactant you have to understand all this entity then only this mole ratio we can uh, solve what is the number of moles of nascent hydrogen so again uh, the thing that i have just said that you have to understand the reactions thoroughly okay because questions are very uh, if only if you have detailed knowledge then only you can answer right what is the number of moles of nascent hydrogen? Nascent hydrogen means it is simply atomic hydrogen, which is expressed like this. Required to prepare one mole of methane from iodomethane. So this is iodomethane and you are preparing methane with the help of nascent hydrogen. Right? Number of moles of nascent hydrogen. Now, remember the first reaction that we have seen uh, under halo, uh, alkyl halide as the static material for the preparation of alkene there we have seen that different types of reagents are there that can produce nascent hydrogen for example you can take the combination of uh, zinc HCl 
you can take the combination of zinc acetic acid or zinc sodium hydroxide so all the varieties of reagents in all cases you are getting nascent hydrogen so here we will not write the reagent we are just inter interested in the how many moles of nascent hydrogen so here if i write nascent hydrogen like this suppose first i have written only one so ch3 will take this h but see what will be the fate of hi there must be two nascent hydrogen one hydrogen will be attached to its methyl part another nascent hydrogen will be attached to i and it will produce hi so this is our main product this is the side product that means two moles required if you want to prepare one mole of the alkene so that is why two should be the sorry two should be the correct option now number five reaction we have discussed four problems and under the heading of from alkyl halide how you can prepare alkene all the four methods we have covered now it is the fifth method but we will use this reagent combination hydrogen iodide and red phosphorus there are different types of phosphorus two are very important red phosphorus white phosphorus so here you will take red phosphorus look at the you can already see the reaction here ri that is our alkyl iodide it is a general equation it is reacting with hi it is producing rh r and h together and iodine is produced now actual reaction if you see here we have taken ethyl iodide reacting with hi it is producing it is capturing this h and these two iodine atom together it is making molecule iodine so here alkyl iodides are mainly alkyl iodides are used in this reaction not any other halogen readily reduced to the corresponding alkene by heating with concentrated hi in presence of red phosphorus temperature is mentioned now if you look at this reaction uh, the question arises here what is the role of red phosphorus isn't it because we have not used red phosphorus in these two reactions this is the general equation and this is the specific example right but R group is CH3, CH2. Now the role of red phosphorus is it is added to remove the iodine, which is side product. So this side product it is removed with the help of red phosphorus, and it produces Pi3. So red phosphorus combined with iodine it produces Pi3. But if you do not use, what will be the problem? the problem will be that iodine will react with alkene again to give back the starting material so that is the reason reason the side product must be removed properly with the help of red phosphorus because there is a chance that back reaction can occur again okay so uh, iodine can react again with rh and we will get back the starting materials but that is obviously not desired so that is why we are using red phosphorus which will help to remove this side product so this is the reaction to be two phos uh, two moles of phosphorus required to remove three moles of iodine molecule the alkene formed by this method has the same number of carbon atoms as the alkyl halide so in some methods we have seen for example if you when you use woods there uh, two alkyl halides are connecting together and the number of carbon atoms are doubled so in this case you can see number of carbon atoms remain same so you have started with two carbon you are getting two carbon only now some more information though we are discussing this reaction under the heading where alkyl halide is the starting material but just for extra information you should also know that using this reagent combination hi and red phosphorus not just alkyl halide that is this is roh that means it is alcohol this is aldehyde this is ketone and this is carboxylic acid obviously you can also use rx but that we have already covered but you can also use instead of rx you can also use alcohol aldehyde ketone carboxylic acid and in all these cases we are using this reagent combination temperature is uh, 423 kelvin here it is mentioned as uh, 200 degree centigrade but if you convert to kelvin it is close to 423 kelvin so temperature more or less same 
only the difference is the number of hi is changing right so in case of uh, ri when it is reacting with hi we have taken hi one is to one one mole of ri one mole of hi but when it is alcohol we have taken two moles of hi the reason is here one extra side product is there fine when it is aldehyde now it is 4 hi now instead of one iodine we are getting two iodine all the reactions you are seeing here all are balanced fine both side number of carbon hydrogen oxygen everything is same when it is ketone then also it is 4 hi side products are also just like aldehyde when it is carboxylic acid now it is 6 hi because now we are getting 2 h2o and 3 iodine so 6 hi but that means 6 iodine atoms obviously it will be 3 iodine so alcohol aldehyde ketone carboxylic acid they also in the presence of the same reagent combination same type of temperature we can get alkene An interesting point is that here you have only r so you are getting rh here we have r and c so one carbon will come from the aldehyde group so obviously carbon number is same then here rco so as if this co group is changed to hydrogen but again number of carbon same because we have not used any other source of carbon so it has to be same and in the side product also there is no carbon so whatever is the number of carbon in the uh, main substrate that will be same in the product also r and c that means r there is some number of carbon atoms and one carbon from co to h C, C from carboxylic acid. So under the heading B, where it is from alkyl halide, total five methods we have seen. Then the last one, which is from carboxylic acid. Now carboxylic acid will be the starting material. In this case, uh, we have total two methods. That is using carboxylic acid. Though we have in the previous slide, we have just seen that from carboxylic acid using red phosphorus HI, you can prepare alkyl. But uh, that we have already covered. So two more extra methods we will discuss. The first method is decarboxylation. Now the meaning of decarboxylation is simple. It means removal of CO2. That any process where there is removal of CO2, we call it decarboxylation. Remember, uh, we when hydrogen is removed, we call it dehydrogenation. So anything starting with d that means you are removing it fine so minus co2 that means you will start with some carboxylic acid and there will be removal of co2 group that is the net reaction when carboxylic acid is heated with soda lime what is soda lime soda lime is mixture of sodium hydroxide and calcium oxide and the ratio is 3 is to 1 so three times of this one time of cao Temperature 630 Kelvin. So when you are doing this process at this temperature, what will happen? A CO2 molecule will be removed and you will get alkene. Obviously, one carbon atom will be less. Why? Because one CO2 is already gone. And you will get alkene. So this is the reaction. First, this carboxylic acid, we have taken some general uh, structure of carboxylic acid in presence of sodium hydroxide which is already present in soda line this sodium it will replace h you will get sodium salt and h and oh together will produce water so as the uh, this h and oh and uh, that is simply replacement of some groups now this sodium salt in the second step another NaOH molecule. Now see, as if this R and H are connected together, and this total part is removed as Na2CO3. So I'm writing it in this way so that you can understand. Uh, it will be helpful for you to memorize how this reaction is occurring. Okay, so RH plus Na2CO3. So in the previous examples are general. Now you can see actual example where 
our R group we have taken as methyl. That is the simplest one you can take. And when you take it as one carbon will be less because this part will be removed in the form of CO2. So you have started with carboxylic acid by two carbon atoms, but you will end with only one carbon because one CO2 molecule is already uh, removed. Though CO2 molecule individually you cannot see, that is uh, already inside Na2CO3. Fine. So this is the uh, reaction. Now the question of why we add CaO because in the reactions we have not written CaO. The role of CaO is to help the reaction to be performed at relatively higher temperature so that we can ensure that complete decarboxylation is occurring. Another role of this is that it absorbs the moisture of NaOH. NaOH has a tendency to draw moisture but that will be not good for the reaction. So that is why if you use some substance which can absorb the moisture and keep the condition dry, this type of reagent will be helpful for the reaction. So that is why we are using calcium oxide. Okay. So this is the role of CaO. So in soda lime, NaOH is directly used in the reaction, but not CaO. Okay. The second method where also carboxylic acid is the starting material is coal-based electrolytic method. Now here the reaction will be uh, performed in some cell. There will be reaction at cathode. Uh, there will be reaction at anode. But here the reaction that you are seeing that is the net reaction. Starting material we have not written carboxylic acid because the actual starting material is where it, when it is already converted to sodium or potassium salt of acid. So two molecules we have taken reacting with two molecules of H2O. Now these two R groups, one from each carboxylic acid salt combined together, it will form RR. NaOH, H2 and CO2, they are the byproduct. So when Sodium and potassium salt of carboxylic acid is electrolyzed. A higher alkane containing even number of carbon atoms at the anode is formed. So this will be formed at anode. Now why we are saying higher alkane? Because in the starting material you have single R. It may be R, may be CSG, it may be CSG, CH2, whatever. But now in the product, the number is double and it will always be an even number. Suppose in R group, you have total three carbon. That is, you suppose you have taken propyl group. So what will happen? These three carbon, then another three carbon, three plus three, it will be six. So even if you start from one number, it will be always double. So that is why always you are getting even number carbon atoms. That is in the product. It is always the higher alkane. So these two points are important, even number and higher alkane. And the import, another important point is it is formed at anode. Suppose you are getting question that whether it is formed at anode or cathode. Then the answer is it will be formed at anode. By the dimerization of two carboxylic acids. So as if here dimerization occurring. Now when we will see the detail mechanism, then you can understand this dimerization. This method is suitable for preparing symmetrical alkanes. Now that is already you can see. Next, we will see the reactions. At anode, there will be oxidation. And at cathode, there will be reduction. Now, what is the reaction that will be occurring? Suppose I have taken CH3 group as R. Our R group is CH3. And I will directly write the sodium or potassium salt. So as if a negative sign is there, two molecules obviously. Now from this molecule, if you remove two electron, two electron means from a single acetate molecule when you are removing two, one electron, total two carboxylate ion is there. Per molecule you are removing one electron. Total two electron you are removing minus sign I have written. Obviously you will get some radical species, isn't it? And it will be O dot because there is two electron. Now you have removed one electron. Now this uh, single electron carrying oxygen. Next what will happen? There will be 
removal of CO2 group. How? Suppose if you are breaking this CC bond, in each bond, you know, there is two electrons. So when you are breaking it, CH3 dot radical will be there. And that this dot and this dot together, it will make another carbon oxygen bond. So one carbon silic, uh, that is, sorry, one CO2 molecule per CH3 CO total two will be removed. And you will get two CH3 dot. Now these two CH3 dot together will make CH3 CH3, which is nothing but C2A6, right? So you have started from uh, sodium salt of acetic acid where only uh, one carbon is there because this CO2 will be removed, right? So from this part, now it is doubled. Okay, and we are getting some higher alkyl. Now, this is the reaction which is occurring at anode. And at anode, we have seen two electrons are removed. Now, these two electrons will be used up in cathode. Here, the reactions at cathode will be two water molecule because water molecule is also another starting material. If it accepts these two electrons, what will happen? Suppose I have uh, broken this H and OH as if H plus and HO minus. Suppose there is no electron. It is simply H plus and HO minus. And obviously it will be total 2H2O. So 2, 4, 2H. Now, as we have added two electrons, so this H plus, it will not be in the form of H plus. It will be basically dot because it will accept electron. This part we have not changed. Now, this dot, that is two H dot, if they are together, it can make water molecule. Okay. Sorry, not water molecule. I'm saying hydrogen molecule. So, in this way, hydrogen will be produced. Now, if you look, the overall reaction, you will be able to understand the formation of the side products. Two CO2 formation you have already seen. One mole of H2 is produced. Then where from this two NOH is coming? Here you can see already two hydroxide ion. And I have not written the sodium here, but two sodium plus is still present in the medium. So these two sodium plus and two HO together it will make to any which. So in this way, you can understand how the reaction is balanced. Remember, actual reaction is occurring at anode and at cathode, basically there is formation of uh, H2. CO2 is also produced in the anode side. Okay. So this is called as electrolytic method. So once we have finished the preparation methods of alkanes, next topic is Physical properties of alkanes. Before starting physical properties, we have to understand what is the deciding factor based on which there will be a variation in the physical properties like melting point, boiling point, density. It is based on intermolecular forces of attraction. The physical properties of alkanes depend upon these forces. Intermolecular forces means the force that is operating between two individual molecules. So be very careful about this spelling. If I'm writing as INTRA, intra, that means it is within the same molecule. But when it is inter, that means it is in two individual molecules. Being almost non-polar, I'm sorry, non-polar. Being uh, which one we are talking about? We are talking about alkane. We know alkane is non-polar because in alkane, what you have? You have only CC bond and CH bond. Now the electronegativity difference between C and H, it is not large. So that is why there will be no polarity. And CC bond, it is the bond between same atom, no question of polarity. So overall, you can say alkanes are non-polar. So what kind of intermolecular forces are important when you have some non-polar molecule? It is obviously Van der Waals type of intermolecular forces of attraction. Now, Van der Waals intermolecular forces 
that is dependent on the shape of any molecule. So this is not just for alkene. Whenever you are talking about Van der Waals interaction in any molecule, it is always the shape and the structure of the molecule you have to check. Now, as we are doing the discussion for alkenes, you have to consider the overall shape of the molecule of the alkene and also the structure of the alkene. Then only we will be able to understand what kind of Van der Waals type force is there, whether it is very uh, strong Van der Waals or weak, because when the Van der Waals is strong, accordingly, it will affect the physical properties. The magnitude of these forces depends upon the surface area of contact between adjacent molecule. Greater surface area, stronger is the Van der Waals force of attraction. Now, what it means? Here we will take example. We have taken N pentane. So see how it is written with a ball and stick model. So N pentane is, if I'm writing is like this, keeping similarity. So in the terminal positions, you have CH3. So these balls in gray color, they are actually hydrogen. And the blue balls are carbon. Here we have two hydrogen two hydrogen, two hydrogen, just try to find similarity with the ball and stick model. When it is neopentane, now the structure is, okay, let me draw it keeping similarity so that you can understand better. C, so in this way, three hydrogens are attached, right? Now, why uh, there is uh, this picture we have taken with ball and stick? And also, you can see some electron cloud. This is basically the electron cloud. Because electrons, uh, though we write the electrons in the bond in this way, but they are actually present like cloud. Now, from the electron cloud, you will be able to understand the overall shape. Now, in N pentane, there is total 5 carbon. In neo pentane, also, there is total 5 carbon, right? So when carbon number is same, one structure is linear, another structure is with so many branching. Maximum branching is we have already done. Now you can see the surface area. Here the surface area is very high when it is linear chain. But when the branching is increased, here you have a total three methyl groups. When branching is increased, it is gradually approaching a spherical shape. So from this type of shape, as if now it is approaching a spherical shape. Now suppose uh, instead of neopentane, if I write it like this, isopentane, this is also 5 carbon. Now in this case also, it will be comparatively more spherical than n-pentane, but it is less spherical than neopentane. So what I'm trying to say is that starting from n-pentane, suppose this is A, this is B, this is C. So when you are moving from A to B, you have increased branching. When you have moved from B to C, you have increased even more branch. So more is the branching, gradually the shape will be more spherical. So when the shape is becoming more spherical, the surface area will decrease. Now Van der Waals interaction is directly proportional to surface area. That is why this line is mentioned. Greater surface area, greater Van der Waals interaction. So from this structure, we can say when branching will be increased, Van der Waals interaction will also decrease because now the surface area is very less. Here it is mentioned, depends upon the surface area of contact between adjacent molecules. So here you are seeing only one end pentane, but suppose I have drawn another end pentane. So two end pentane in both their contact area is very high compared to contact area of two neopentane molecules, isn't it? So that is why more Van der Waals interaction will be there between two n-pentane compared to between two neopentane, okay? So this is, uh, that is this Van der Waals, it will be responsible for all the three, uh, three to four physical properties that we are next going to discuss. The first physical property is physical state, simple physical state, they are colorless, 
they are odorless. Now at room temperature, 298 Kelvin, alkanes having carbon atoms, that is carbon atom when it is number one to four, that is starting from methane up to four carbon butane. If it is so, their physical state is gas. Then for carbon number five to 17, it is liquid. And after 17, 18 to more than that, it will be solid. So what is happening here? When you are increasing the number of carbon, molar mass is increasing. And when molar mass is increasing, it has direct relation with physical state. From gas, it will be liquid and then it will be solid. So for example, I can say for butane, it is basically gas. Pentane is liquid. Then if we take N non-adecan, that is linear. Non-adecan means total 19 carbon. Decan is 10 and if I have added nona, that means total 9 plus 10, 19 carbon. So this is basically solid. So from these three examples, you can understand, you can find uh, how, as we have already mentioned, 1 to 4. So remember this, 1 to 4 gas, 5 to 70 liquid, 18 or more is solid. Right? Next physical property is solubility. Alkanes are non-polar, that we already know. And we also know that polar has interaction with polar substance. Similarly, non-polar has affinity for non-polar. If it is so, obviously alkanes will be insoluble in polar solvent and the first polar solvent that comes in our mind is simply water. It will not be soluble in water at all. Even alcohol also, it will not be soluble. But if you take some non-polar solvents where carbon hydrogen mainly present or if you take any non-polar, any solvent where dipole moment is zero, for example, carbon tetrachloride, here chlorine is present. But over on the molecule is no dipole moment, so it is very non-polar molecule. So when your solvents are non-polar, alkanes will be soluble. Now, exact reason if we say it is because the energy required to overcome the existing van der Waals force. Suppose we have taken some alkane X. Now between two X, there is some interaction present and now you have added some solvent. So a new interaction will also generate New interaction is the interaction between X and S, which is S for solvent. Now the initial, that is before solvent addition, the interaction is XX type and the new interaction is XX, S type. Now the new interaction must be comparable or stronger than the already present interaction. Then only this interaction we can break, isn't it? So that is it is mentioned that to overcome the existing Van der Waals force, so you have already some existing Van der Waals force between two X. You have to overcome that. But if your new interaction is very weak, which will happen when you take some polar solvent, suppose you have taken water, but there is no interaction between X and water. So the new interaction is not so strong, which can overcome the already existing interaction. So that is why that is the reason polar solvent will not work for their solubility because soluble means what? You have to break the interaction between X. You have to separate them. That is solubility, right? So it is because energy required to overcome existing Van der Waals forces and the energy required to generate new Van der Waals forces is quite comparable. Now, if your solvent, suppose I have written S prime, which is non-polar. S prime being non-polar, it will also have compar uh, very good interaction with X. So maybe it is just comparable with the interaction between two X. Now you can break the old interaction. You can generate new interaction. So this is the reason. Next physical property, very important, boiling point. Boiling point increases regularly incre with increase in their molar mass. Now that is uh, always happens. And it is not just true for boiling point and melting point also you will see that. So molar mass, that is also directly related to Van der Waals interaction. When molar mass increases, Van der Waals interaction also increases. Okay. Now intermolecular Van der Waals forces is also proportional to molecular size and surface area. 
that we have the detailed reason we have discussed in the previous section. One more important point is just remember this though the logic we have already seen that BP of state chain alkene is greater than the BP of branch chain alkene. So in the previous example, you have seen neopentane, which is a branched chain, and here Van der Waals interaction is very weak. And Van der Waals interaction weak means what? Boiling point will not be high. Boiling point means what? You have some substance, you are converting it to vapor state, liquid state. Sorry, uh, you, it is already in liquid state, it is converting, you are converting it to vapor state. That means the distance between molecules you are increasing when you are boiling. Now to distance between this in, to increase distance between molecules, the interaction must be overcome. We must overcome. And interaction when we can overcome easily when Van der Waals interaction is very poor. So in case of uh, neopentane, we have seen this is neopentane and this is in pentane. Here Van der Waals interaction is very strong, very high. Here it is very low. So when Van der Waals interaction is low, obviously you don't have to put much energy to separate the molecules. You can easily achieve boiling point, but that you cannot easily achieve for straight chain alkene because your Van der Waals interaction is high. So this is the reason why we have this statement. Look at this example. Here we have hexane C6. BP is 69. Now this is linear chain. Now keeping this parent chain 4. So now we have total 4 carbon in the parent chain. Sorry, 5 carbon because uh, in the previous case, number 1, you have total 6 carbon in the parent chain. Now we have decreased from 6 to 5. We have now 1 branching. Look at the value decreased. Then further we have some changes. Now the methyl substituent instead of at two position, now it is at three position. And here also slightly it is decreased. Now if you are thinking that uh, in second molecule, one methyl branching, third molecule also one methyl branching, then what is the difference? Yes, there is difference. In the third molecule, the methyl substitute, substitu I mean methyl is substituted at the middle position. This is the middle position, but here it is not the middle position, right? Now, when it is the middle position, it becomes more symmetrical, more spherical will be it is. So more symmetrical surface area will be even lesser, though it is not having very great effect only from 60 to 58, but still it is decreased, right? So when you have same branch type of branching, single branching, but still it is more symmetrical, it will also have some effect. And in the fourth molecule, now we have total two branching and parent chain is reduced from five to four, 50 degree, okay? So it is so 70, these two are near 60. <clears throat> and when the, we have two branching, we have 50 degree. So you can see the boiling points are uh, if affected when we are increasing the branching. So for the first one, the surface area will be very large. So suppose this is N hexane, I'm drawing it. So if you have another N hexane, now see the contact area is so high. But if you consider the last one, suppose the electron cloud is something like this and another molecule electron cloud is like this. Here surface area will be less than the previous one. After boiling point, what about the effect on melting point? Now, melting point of alkene also increases when there is increase in carbon content because uh, it is directly related to molar mass. Molar mass and Van der Waals interaction directly related. So, when molar mass is increased, Van der Waals interaction is increased. Obviously, now to convert from solid state to liquid state, that is melting point. You have to put more energy when mass of the molecule is high. Mass molecule of molecule is high means carbon content is high. Okay. But one point is also there the variation is not regular. Now, in the previous case, in that is in case of boiling point, it is simpler. You are simply increasing branching, keeping the carbon same. Then we have seen boiling point is decreased. And if you uh, keep the molecule same, suppose you, you have taken some linear chain. 
then you are moving from propane to butane to pentane you will see there is a regular decrease in the boiling but for melting point it is not so because one extra factor we have to consider here so mp of a substance not just for alkene in general mp of a substance depends not only upon the size and shape of the molecule which is true for boiling point but here one more factor is that it also depends on how closely the molecules are packed in the crystal because now we are discussing melting point that means you have some solid and when you have some solid you have to consider the crystal structure how well is the packing when the packing is very well to separate the particles is not so easy when the packing is weak you can easily separate it now when will the packing will be very good that point we have to consider it is observed it is a general observation though you can have some exceptions but general observation is that melting point of even number alkenes greater than melting point of odd number alkenes now one more point also be very careful suppose you are moving from propane that is c3 to c4 what you will expect this is odd number this is even number so obviously c4 will be high but there is another factor you have to remember when you are moving from propane to butane basically molar mass is also increase right so obviously melting point will increase then how you will understand the effect that even number is actually playing so here both the factors will be basically merged that is when you are moving from c3 to c4 it is true that you are moving from odd to even but it is also true you are moving from low molar mass to high molar mass so both the factors will operate because when you are moving from odd to even mp should increase and when you are moving from uh, low molar mass to high molar mass then also uh, melting point should increase so both factors are reinforcing but still you will see in some cases even the molar mass is high but because of odd number it is slightly less and that is a melting point here we have taken five carbon molecule so this is sorry six carbon six carbon this is linear chain n hexane look at the boiling point just focus on boiling point first it is 69 then 60 58 50 which we have already seen in the last slide now look at the melting point here we have one branching at two position here we have two branching uh, two separate carbon and here we have branching in the uh, same carbon okay so when we have uh, branching in the same carbon one more point just let me check one thing so here in all cases carbon number is same so don't um, that is you don't have to think about uh, molar mass we will just see what about the uh, branching so when from the first structure we have moved to the second here branching is increased and what is the effect on melting point now the melting point is decreased because there is a minus sign so minus 95 minus 154 the melting point is decreased right here even or we are not considering because all are even okay so focus is on branching how the branching is affecting so melting point is decreased right because surface area will decrease van der waals interaction will decrease you can easily melt the molecule now come to the next one here two methyl group and these two carbons now minus 154 and minus 135 compared to this situation in case of third molecule now the melting point is increased why it is increased because see compared to this structure this structure is more symmetrical isn't it now when it is more symmetrical the packing will be very good so that is why from minus 154 now the melting point is increased to minus 135 okay then in the last one from minus 135 it is even more increased so the more symmetrical it becomes it has effect on melting point the melting point will increase so not just even number there is a better packing it is also true sometimes the branching may be such that packing will be very good and melting point will also be high 
and the last physical property density both molar mass and van der waals force of interaction increases with an increase in number of carbon atoms because these two are directly related now molar mass is increasing with uh, when you are moving from propane to butane to pentane van der waals is also increasing now when you are doing so it is true just keep uh, all the molecules in linear so that we can compare the molar mass so mass is increasing fine that the molecules occupy less volume in comparison to increased mass density means what mass by volume now suppose the numerator is increasing very very fast volume is also increasing because uh, now the number of carbon atoms are high so it will occupy more volume chain is increasing but the effect on volume increase it is not so high so ultimately what will happen the densities of alkanes increases on increasing the number of carbon atoms in the alkane because the denominator actually both are increasing but the increase in v is not so high compared to the increase in a ultimately numerator increase is more effective so what is the effect on the ratio b will ultimately increase Though densities are increased, but remember, if you compare density with water, alkanes are very light compared to water. They always float on top of water, so that proves compared to water, their densities are very low. In this table, you can see all the physical properties we have discussed: boiling point, melting point, density, physical state. Right. Now uh, look at the physical state: gaseous, then liquid. Here we have up to C10, but uh, above uh, 17, it will be solid also. Look at the density. These uh, four are mentioned with the unit gram per liter because if you do gram per ml, the value is very low. It is difficult to write, so that is why because these four are gaseous, so you can understand the density will be very very low. So the unit we have taken gram per liter. Though normally we take gram per ml, but we have taken gram per liter so that the figure is better. Otherwise, the figure will be very low. So you can see how it is increased. That is the very smooth increase. Then uh, 0 0.6 to 6. Again, we can see some increase. Now look at the boiling point. There is smooth increase. Because all are here linear, there is no question of branching. We are just focusing on molar mass. Because if you increase molar mass as well as increase branching, you will not be able to understand whether it is the effect of molar mass or uh, branching. Because with increase in molar mass, boiling point should increase. But when there is branching increased, then boiling point is decreased. So these two are opposite. So here we have taken all our linear, linear chain. So keeping no branching, if you simply compare the boiling point, here molar mass is increasing, boiling point is also increasing, right? Now look at the melting point. Here, from methane to ethane, there is a decrease, right? Now, though these two are very close values, so sometimes experimental error can be there. So we shouldn't say anything about it, but look at the next one. Now the difference is high minus 183 but now it is minus 190 so melting point is even uh, less now look at this value it is odd and when it is odd it should be less so though molar mass is increasing but still it is odd okay and then from propane to butane we are moving to even so it is increased but overall if you see it is not regular in case of boiling point, you can find some regularity, but here it is not real. Fine. So from C5 to C6, obviously there will be drastic change because molar mass is increasing. Okay. And molar mass is increasing and also the it is changing from uh, odd to even. So both effects are there. This is the overall effect. It is not regular. Now we have a question here. Which isomer of C6H14? Obviously, it is alkane. Now we are discussing alkane, so you can understand. I will discuss some alkane question. But when you will actually face question in exam hall, 
from the formula you have to recognize that it is L because it is not mentioned it is L but C6H4 it is matching with CNH2N plus 2 so obviously it will be L then which isomer has a higher boiling point now highest boiling point names are given so you have to draw the structure right this is hexane then we have pentane pentane so gradually branching is increased one branching one branching and in the last one two branching parent number chain is even lesser so when you have c6h14 you can see these are the isomers possible so here hexane this is number a molecule 3 methyl pentane is this one b 2 methyl pentane is this one this is d 2 3 dimethyl butane and this molecule is not given in the option but still it is there now look at the boiling point here it is 68 then it is 63 here also single branching single branching but it is uh, symmetric more symmetrical so um, 63 then we have 58 but it is asking which one is highest boiling point so you can understand it is 68 even if it is not mentioned we can say that it is there is no branching compared to b c d there is no branching so obviously it will be having maximum boiling point so hexane is the right answer So this table is actually not required, but I have just placed it so that you can compare all the values. Which of the following is the correct order of melting point of alkenes? Here we have total four, C5, C6, C7, C8. Now, if you simply focus on molar mass, obviously C8 should be maximum uh, melting point. If you focus on even number, then also it should be maximum. So this much information is enough to understand that C8H8 should be at the maximum point. And that is present only in the first option. You will not find it in any other options. And after that, there is C7, 6, and 5. So here we have these melting point values. We have pentane, hexane, heptane, and octane. So octane is having minus 56, then C17, sorry, C7. So gradually, these values are uh, decreased, okay? So, and this table will also uh, help you to understand how overall the values are changing, okay? So first option will be the correct option. So next day, we'll start chemical properties. Physical properties are uh, complete. Thank you for your time. We are ending the session here.